In times of confusion and delusion, call upon the Lord and pray for clarity. It's as clear as mud, a saying that means that something just doesn't make sense. It means that something is unclear, opaque, cloudy, convoluted, murky, muddy, hard to comprehend, and just difficult to understand. It means that something is not very transparent at all. And no matter how hard you try to figure it out, you just don't get it. But we all have areas like that in life because we all don't understand all there is to understand about life. In fact, some things are so multifaceted, multi-layered and complex that even the best and brightest among us don't have an explanation for it. And some things are so profoundly deep that you won't even know all you don't know about it. Even King David admitted in Psalm 131 and 1, Lord, my heart is not proud. My eyes are not haughty. I don't concern myself with matters too great or too awesome for me to grasp. Allow me to translate. I don't get everything and it's okay. So there will be times in life when you won't be able to grasp what's going on with you or around you. Times when you won't understand why this happened or that happened. Times when you won't know where you are now or where you're headed. Times when you don't know where to go, what to do, or what to say. Times when you just feel lost. There will inevitably be times in life when you won't be able to see your way through. Times when things will seem to be as clear as mud. But you know what? It's okay. And it's going to be okay. Because we serve a God who still sees clearly in cloudy times. The God who gets what we don't. The God who gets everything. Isaiah 40, 28 says, Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. Our God is never confounded or dumbfounded about anything. So although things may be unclear at times, you don't have to live your whole life all perplexed and puzzled and baffled, bewildered and confused all the time because confusion is not of God. 1 Corinthians 14 says, for God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. So if you feel confused in life, just know that it did not come from God. God is not the source of it, nor is he the reason for it. No, our God is a God of clarity. Therefore, if you are unclear about things that you really want to be clear on, you can seek him for it. You can look to him for it. You can ask him for it. Yes, you can pray for clarity. Proverbs 2, 3 to 6 says, Indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. James 1, 5, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. So you can ask him, God, remove the scales from my eyes that I may see what I can't see, 
on my own. Lord, open my eyes to see past the weeping of the night until I can see the joy of the morning. Open my eyes to see through the suffering of this present time, to see to the glory that will be revealed in me. Open my eyes to see beyond the test, to see my testimony. Open my eyes to see past me, to see things the way you see them. Oh God, make it clear to me. Oh God, make it plain to me. Lord, I pray for clarity as we see in our text. In the Old Testament book that bears his name, the prophet Jeremiah had been prophesying during a very murky and cloudy time in the history of Judah. He had been foretelling of the coming fall of Jerusalem at the hand of the Babylonians because God had been speaking to him and giving him clarity on what was to come. But no one else could really see what God was opening Jeremiah's eyes to see. So therefore, no one else was really saying what Jeremiah was saying. There was even an opposing false prophet named Hananiah who was muddying up the waters and adding confusion to the mix by saying that God was going to destroy the Babylonians and Judah would be just fine. Huh. They didn't want to receive the Lord's true clarity from Jeremiah. So they found themselves somebody who would just say what they wanted to hear. But note that like Jeremiah, when you get clarity, you won't always see sunshine and rainbows because some truth hurts. Some clarity can be scary. But when God gives you that kind of clarity, don't be so afraid of what he shows you that you put back on the rose colored glasses of delusion just because you didn't like what you saw. But for Jeremiah, even the king of Judah, Zedekiah, questioned him in Jeremiah 32. Why do you prophesy as you do? You say, this is what the Lord says. I am about to give this city into the hands of the king of Babylon and he will capture it. If you fight against the Babylonians, you will not succeed. Now, if I was Jeremiah, I would have been like, I'm saying it because God said it, and I'm saying it because it's clear and it's true. But again, God gave Jeremiah a level of clarity that no one else at the time seemed to have. So King Zedekiah didn't like what Jeremiah was saying so much so that he confined and imprisoned him in the courtyard of the guard in the royal palace of Judah just for proclaiming the clear message, the clear truth of the Lord from the Lord. Now, if that sounds familiar to you, the same thing happened to our Lord Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. But he was persecuted and crucified just for saying and just for being the true clarity of God, injected into a world of lies, manipulation, and confusion. Jesus told Pontius Pilate in John 18, 37, everyone on the side of truth listens to me. In other words, everyone on the side of clarity hears the voice of Christ because Jesus is clarity itself, himself. But notice, in both Jesus's and Jeremiah's case, don't be surprised if your clarity upsets the confused. When you have a vision, you will always be at odds with the blind. Once clarity sets you free, it will always stir up some stuff with those who are still in bondage. So while Jeremiah was yet still confined in King Zedekiah's courtyard, God says to him in Jeremiah 33 and 3, Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. God was essentially saying, 
while everybody else is being all confused about what's going on and what's about to happen, you, Jeremiah, you can pray for clarity. And he's saying the same thing to you today. So call to him and he will help you get what you don't get. Call to him and he will help you see what you can't see. Call to him and he will help you gain understanding. Call to him, appeal to the Father, petition our great God. Yes, in the name of Jesus, pray for clarity.